Draft week is here. It's time to check in on those draft props, courtesy of FanDuel. Where are the best bets? Where are players going to land over under on a ton of players and some intrigue at the top with the quarterbacks? All that and more coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We appreciate all of our everydayers, and we appreciate everyone. Please hit that subscribe button on YouTube or anywhere that you listen to your podcast. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is going to be draft prop heavy featuring FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks at FanDuel. Win or lose, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. This is my favorite way to bet all year long, Matt, is <laughs> no to FanDuel, and I think this is where we can get the biggest advantage against the house because of how we can utilize our scouting eyes and when you see Johnny Manziel over under being like pick three and a half, you're like, well, that's really easy because no team in their right mind should have drafted Manziel in the first round period. And it's definitely not going to be drafting him in the top three. And uh, I was actually a little surprised that year that Blake Bortles went as high as he did. But oh, that was a shocker. Yeah. yeah. Like Johnny, it's like, come on. The, I know he's, I know it's a big name and he's a popular name, but he, what Manziel just wasn't going to go that high. And, and that was one of the easiest bets I've ever made in my entire life. And uh, I don't know if there's going to be any that are that easy here, Matt, but I think there might be fun where somewhere we're like, yeah, okay, this is this is one where uh, I, I'm really confident putting some money down on on what will happen in this NFL draft as chaotic and as unpredictable as the draft can be sometimes, Matt. Okay, so I'm hesitant if I should tell the story and my memory's not good enough. Do I tell the story every year in draft week or do I never tell the story? Well, I'm going to tell the story. All right. So. This was, it's funny, my, my son had the NFL Network on yesterday and was watching the draft recap of the, the, the year I was with the Browns. I'm like, I was in that war room, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I know that, blah, blah, I don't hear it. <laughs> but anyway, that year, it was like this time of the week, maybe a little bit later, and my buddy calls me. Or, I mean, texts weren't even that big back then. I get my flip phone out, and I'm like, hey, I got a minute, what do you need? He's like, I just found these draft props online. I've never seen them before. I'm like, well, <laughs> I don't know if I, I'm in the facility walking around with my flip phone. I'm like, I don't know if we should have this conversation or not. He's like, how about you just answer yes, no, or neither? You know, like stay away. So he asked me like 16 and it, they were all like linebackers in the first round, corners in the first round. I, I bet he asked me 16 or 17. I think I told him to stay away from five or six. I wasn't sure. And he got 10 of 11 right with the 11 being a push, you know, like it was five linebackers and it hit. Still <laughs> bought me a beer for it, by the way. <laughs> wow, wow. And, and I wonder how much that uh, it's got to be difficult to set these with the draft because um, how do you even decide? Like some of them are pretty obvious. Are you going by mocks? Are you going by insiders? Because yeah. some things get really, um, really skewed. They were pretty easy from where I was sitting. Hungry. You know, I'm like, that yeah. guy's a terrible character guy. No one knows it. He's never going to go. You know what I mean? Like I had right. information, you know? Well, that's fascinating because, well, our, our first play, it's, it's alphabetical here mm -hmm. by first name. So Adonai Mitchell is the first name that's going to come up when we hit the players. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of players. We'll see how many of these we can get to. Yeah, if we yeah, get yeah. The draft props. But we got to start at the quarterbacks at the top. And we're at FanDuel.com, uh, FanDuel uh, sportsbook.fanduel.com and NFL draft props here. And it starts with pick number one, which we already know is, is Caleb Williams. So the intrigue starts, Matt, at pick number two. Mm -hmm. Jaden Daniels has been the favorite here for quite a while. He's minus 175 to be the second pick in the draft to Washington. Uh, it's plus 175 for Drake May, too. And J.J. McCarthy making some headway, 9-1 to one odds now to be the second pick in the draft. And I think we can probably eliminate anybody else from the, from the conversation at number two. 
I would assume so. And and I don't want to spend a ton of time at the top here, but I do just think the numbers are interesting of how strong, you know, Vegas is leaning towards them being the number two pick. Doesn't even have to be the commanders, folks. I mean, the Chiefs could trade up to two. I mean, whatever. I mean, it this has to he just has to go two. Um, I do give the commanders credit though. They seem to have been been very good at keep, you know, not showing their hand. I mean, I don't think we've gotten a lot of indicators out of Washington. It seems like Daniels, but McCarthy's still floating around there a little bit. There's a lot of talk about Washington and their quote unquote alpha test that they that they that they ran basically. And so what happened was, and, and I th- judging by Jaden Daniels folks that were kind of you know a little unhappy that it was a group visit, they thought it was just going to be Jaden Daniels meeting with Washington. They had four top quarterbacks come in. It was Jaden Daniels, it was Drake May, it was JJ McCarthy, and I think it was um, Michael Penix was the fourth. Which, yeah, is, which is kind of telling that it was Bo Nix right. and Michael Penix. Or it was not Bo Nix, it was Michael Penix that was invited to the party, which might tell you something about Bo Nix when we get to him as well on the over-unders. But um, the, basically, they all went to Top Golf or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and everyone's calling it an alpha test. It was like, okay, let's get them all together in a semi-competitive but pretty laid-back environment, see how everybody deals with it. Did Jaden Daniels fail thinking like, oh, man, now I have to compete with other guys for your attention? Or is are we just making way too much of this? Like uh, This kind of stuff fascinates me, how teams might try to break ties in their draft room or just get to know the guys a little bit better and how they might be wired. So I found this interesting, and... I listen to a ton of podcasts. Pro Football Focus has a very good one. I I listen to it here and there. It's not one I listen to religiously. And that's where I heard this information. And as they talked through it, they had a pretty interesting conversation. They they went back like 10 years of the top quarterbacks and just did their best job of if these guys all got together at top golf when they were not yet NFL players, who do you think they would have flocked to? And almost every one of them ended up being the best quarterback in that draft. You know what I mean? Like it may be like Manziel would have been one that was bad. Tebow might've been one that was bad, but almost all of them, what we know about the player now, they ended up being the ones that hit, you know, which I guess isn't coincidental, but maybe we should think more about that stuff at that position. The, t- the thing that should have eliminated Tebow is that he didn't have an NFL arm. He didn't even have a backup right. quarterback. That wasn't his fault. He got drafted so high. He, you know, people flocked to him, but he couldn't throw the ball. Um, so it's looking like you know, if 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 Vegas is correct and you're peering into mm-hmm. Washington's draft board, it's Jaden Daniels is one A, Drake May is one B, and then JJ McCarthy's a, a little further down, distant third. That, that's kind of what mm-hmm. the odds are telling us about the third pick. And if you think that's inaccurate with either Drake May and especially JJ McCarthy, then that's your bet. I would stay away from that personally. I hear you. So which leads us to number three, which Drake Mays the odds on favor, which makes sense. Right. If Jaden Daniels is gone, but Jaden Daniels yeah, is yeah. still there as, you know, the the second, which is kind of the flip. It's like 1A Drake May, 1B Jaden Daniels, and then J.J. McCarthy goes from being 6-1 uh, to one to 4-1 to one for the third pick in the draft. Mm-hmm. And, and you've said this for months now. You're kind of rooting for chaos for Daniels not to go to because then all of this would be just set on its head. Yes, yeah, that that's what that's my favorite thing that will happen is if Jaden Daniels doesn't go to because all the mock drafts are a lot easier when Jaden Daniels go to, and I have a feeling mock drafters are making it easy on themselves by always putting Jaden Daniels too because it does make oh, it yeah. a little easier in my opinion. Dead on, one hundred percent. So I think four is kind of interesting, and we're not going to go through all these. I don't think, yes. but I think four is interesting because Marvin's the clear leader in the clubhouse by Vegas odds. But I don't think four quarterbacks in a row is crazy talk at all. Yeah, so that's the question here, and the it's it's uh, f- plus four twenty for JJ McCarthy. Happy four twenty over the weekend, by the way, to everyone who mm. celebrates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Drake May is nine to one to go four, which is uh, which is interesting. And then the the leader here is Marvin Harrison Jr. But if you think there's going to be a trade into the fourth slot then I think the smart bet at four, and I wouldn't put a lot on it, would be McCarthy because you get that, you know, over four to one odds there. Yeah. So I think I would vote the field over Marvin. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I and, mean, I'm and, not going to pick Byron and Murphy. It's going to be Marvin if there's no trade, why, which is why he still has to be the favorite. So this is one where Vegas could lose out pretty big. Mm-hmm. But That's if there's no trade, then Marvin's the one, but you can't really get any any juice on that Marvin bet being minus 240. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So that's that's one I would not pick Marvin there. 
And then it's kind of the same idea, but with Malik neighbors, although it starts to get a little bit more dicey at pick five where there's no favorite you're, you're getting, uh, you know, you're getting plus two, you're getting plus on, on all the bets now starting at pick number five, if if you hit this one. Yeah. And of course it's going to get harder and harder as you go down. There's a lot more variance, et cetera, Mm -hmm. et cetera. You know, no, I think it's interesting. Of those top fives, is, is there one bet you specifically like for a player for uh, one of the players at one of those slots? Yes, and I'm strongly considering putting a buck on Harrison at five right now. Yeah, three to one odds you're getting there. Yeah, because it pays decent, obviously. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, we need four quarterbacks to go in the top four. It's unlikely. Well, I mustn't say it's unlikely. I don't think it's crazy. How about? player props over unders where they're going to go we're going to start with Adonai Mitchell I think is one of the most difficult to try to figure out where he might go is he wide receiver four there's some stuff about uh you know off field does that make him slide out of round one completely and more player prop over unders I think there's going to be some good ones coming up next Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And yeah, I know it's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing. Uh, And obviously, FanDuel is the place to go to bet on every one of those games. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150. Win or lose to bet on everything, especially these draft props. It's the best thing. It's the biggest advantage you have if you think you have some knowledge about the draft over the house. So go to FanDuel and bet on those draft props right now. We're going to get into a lot more of those specifically player over-unders, where they're going to be drafted. You can bet on everything, obviously. And there's no reason to wait any longer. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We've all been there. Either as a player or a fan, it's halftime. The scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low. You're not sure if you're uh, if you or your team can pull out that win. And that's when you dig deep. You lift your head up and you say to yourself, "It's time to get back in the game. Pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can." That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends and get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly Monopoly you love. It's It's classic Monopoly. You're charging rent on all the iconic properties, but it's on your phone anytime. Tons of new twists. You're playing multiple Monopoly boards, including following leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. So much to do. Uh, Countless dynamic Monopoly boards make your friends bankrupt. You smash their landmarks with a wrecking ball, but you can team up with your friends as well. Crack open community chests, win tournaments, and get extra rewards and climb those leaderboards. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. So here we go. Adon I. Mitchell over under pick 27 and a half, Matt. Where is your vibe right now on Adon I. Mitchell? This is one of the most difficult for me. I see the Buffalo Bills at pick 28, and I see a very good chance that Adonai Mitchell goes there or later with this late information we've got, which is, I think, a big thing that we don't know about. And you talked a little bit about it earlier, Matt. 28 and a half or 27 and a half. How many wide receivers go before the Bills pick at number 28? Did the Bills themselves move up to go get a wide receiver? If they did, would Adonai Mitchell be one of those wide receivers? Uh, he's got the diabetes thing that people are talking about him being uncoachable. Uncoachable. These are anonymous scouts. All it takes is one team to think there's no character stuff. There's no medical problems at all. Adonai Mitchell, over under 27 and a half, man. Obviously, the Bills of 28 are why this number is sitting where it is. Um, I tend to think he'll go earlier than that. Now, the diabetes thing scare me, the character stuff, or, you know, off-the-field stuff scares me. I don't know how to exactly phrase that. But he visited the Steelers. You know, the, that 23rd pick, what if that's New England or a trade down? I mean, teams that are very wide receiver needy. Even 17 and 18, the Jacksonville and the Bengals, I think, are possible. And I also really think the Bills moving up a little is very possible. So I will go earlier on that. 
I will take the over on that and say he goes later. Then I, I, I think there's there might be a little slide, but if you think, and this is not one I'm confident on, uh, I probably wouldn't put my money on this one, but if you think that he's going to be drafted as wide receiver four, then you have to smash the under on that one at 27 and a half. I do think he'll, well, I think he'll be wide receiver five. I think Thomas will go ahead of him. Mm-hmm. But, and five wide receivers should go before 28. You would think, right? I think. Uh, that's what I'm leaning towards, yes. Amarius Mims, 22 and a half over under, man. Well, I think the Steelers are interested at 20. Uh-huh. I think the Eagles are very interested at 22. Because he could sit, they could coach him up, or stick him at guard for a while. But, man, you get to 22 pretty quick in terms of players you think are going to go in the top 22. I'm going to say he goes in the top 22, though. Hopefully I don't do this for all the players. Like, <laughs> they can't all be overs or all be unders, you know? Yeah, they can't all be under. Under would be drafted higher. Over is a bigger number. Is yeah. Later. I'm going to say um, drafted earlier. If you're going later. under, I'm going to go over again on this one. I can because see my question here is what's the, what's the highest he would go? And if it's only five picks earlier, then I think, you know, there's and you don't much of a there's eternity landing after, spot there. Yeah. Right. There's eternity after, and there's only five spots ahead of this that he could go to win you that under bet. Right. I, like I see what you're saying. I think that's yeah. smart. And there's not much of a window for him to land in there. By the way, uh, I'm going to say this, though. And again, I wouldn't bet on the Mims one. I, I think Mims and Adonai Mitchell are just it, they, all over the place could be, could be wild. And so I don't have a really strong feeling about how every team is likely to feel about those two prospects. I will say this though. Uh, Trent Baalke loves size. He loves arm length and wingspan. Schefter this morning said he was a a half an inch or a quarter of an inch shorter wingspan than Giannis, the Greek freak in the NBA. I mean, that's crazy wingspan, 36 and a half inch arms. He's got 11 inch hands. Uh, The, the Jaguars GM, he loves size. Mm-hmm. He loves arm length specifically in prospects. That's why he drafted. Uh, that's why he passed on um, Hutchinson, Hutchinson at yeah, pick number yeah. one just a couple of years ago. And he doesn't care about injury stuff. Team ACL is what we used to call it in San Francisco. He would draft guys off the ACL all the time. He wouldn't even get that big of an injury discount on him. So he doesn't care about the injury stuff either. Mims at 17. Watch out for that one. Ooh, you're selling me on that. I feel even better about my call. And I also think Cincinnati's possible because – the, the right tackle they signed is only on a one-year deal, and Mims could play guard for now. And they look for giants at tackle. The running back is is tough, the running back market in this draft. Mm-hmm. And I saw Blake Corum as the only running back on FanDuel, and I thought, oh, this is going to be easy money because it's going to be way too high. But they put the over at 86 and a half. I thought it was going to be something like, you know, in the second round. So this is, you know, deep into the third round for Blake Corum. How early do the running backs go? Blake Corum, the only running back – that has the over under here at FanDuel. I'm interested. I wonder why they came up with that number specifically. And mm-hmm. when I went to it, I think it's pretty obvious because the Browns pick 85. I think that could be a back. And Dallas picks 87, which if they don't go back in round two, I don't think they'll wait much longer. There, I noticed the Chargers aren't in that neighborhood. Right. So, that's, so my two questions there were where are the Chargers? Mm-hmm. And the you mentioned Dallas. I think the if I had to bet on one thing that's pretty deep in the draft outside of the top 50 picks, it's that I think they're picking 56 in round two. Top running back in the draft goes to Dallas mm-hmm. round two. And likely Brooks. I mean, they did the right. they did the, the surgery on him. He's a Texas guy. I think he's the yeah. best back in this draft. Yes. There you go. Um, how many backs do you think go ahead of Corum, though? I think mm-hmm. at least two. Two or three. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, the the draft does though that late third round area, especially. Uh, I think that's I think when the run's going to happen. Yeah, that's a running back run area outside of the top seventy five, so they could just rattle off the board very quickly. Again, I'm not. I don't have a super strong feeling about this one. Um, so maybe we'll we'll start going to some that we have stronger feelings on. Yeah. yeah. Now, but I, I did want to go to the one running back on this list, and I think it's just it's telling how low this over under is. It's got to be the lowest over under on any of these prospects. By far, I, I would imagine, and I I wouldn't touch it. That sounds about yeah. right to me. Yeah, right. here we go. This is a big one. This is Bo Nix draft position. That's a thirty-two good. and a half. 
So he is going to be drafted somewhere before the first pick in round two, Matt. Uh, and I, that for me, mm. I'm over all day long. He will not. Me too. Yeah. I think he's going to go closer to the third round than the first round. Yes. I mean, even if someone, all we need for him is to still be sitting in the green room Thursday night when it ends. And I think that's going to happen. I don't think yep. he, you know, they're saying somebody might trade into the back of the first round for him. I don't think so. I think maybe someone trades up to the fifth pick and on Friday, maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he's still around. I, I, that's the best one I've heard yet. We say that, yeah, this, this is my favorite bet so far. Uh, I'm definitely taking the over on Bo Nix. Don't think he's going to go in round one. And we say this every year, too. Ah, fifth-year option, some team's going to trade in the end of round one and get a quarterback. Well, it's happened like one time ever, and that was Lamar Jackson, right? Fifth year, well, yes, and fifth year options aren't as wonderful as people think they are. By the way, I don't think teams care about them all that much. No, because they're really expensive now, and then you just re up them before they hit their fifth year option if they're that good. Yeah. All right. So Bo Nix, I think we both feel good that he's not going to be a first round pick on Thursday. I do too. I do too. Yeah. I think Penix goes ahead of him. Interesting. Okay. And Penix is on this list. We'll get to Michael Penix next, and more player NFL draft over unders. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app right now and get a special offer for our listeners. Game Time is now authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster to all of your favorite Major League Baseball games. Faster and easier prices on Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. We're talking about flash deals, zone deals, uh, last-minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last-minute sports, concerts, comedy, theater tickets, not just baseball. We're talking football, basketball, whatever sport, whatever concert, whatever comedy, whatever your favorite artist is in town, you want to see a concert, go to Game Time and find those tickets even up to an hour after the event starts. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL. That's a new code, LOCKEDONNFL. For $20 off your first purchase, terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code. Locked on NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. So we took the over. Bo Nix, in our opinion, won't go in the first round. What about Michael Penix? He has the same exact over under of 32 and a half, man. Ooh, I think he... Wow, that's a tough one. I was, say, I was about to say, I think he goes ahead of that. But that what I'm really saying is I think he's a first-round pick. I don't think he's a first-round pick. I think he goes ahead of Knicks, but ends up on early round two. I feel exactly the same way. I would take yeah. the over on this one as well. I don't feel as strong as the Bo Nix pick, but I would still take over on both of those quarterbacks. Four quarterbacks in round one is my. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's so many good receivers and tackles. You know, right. Here's a good one. Brock Bowers, 11 and a half. So somewhere in between where the team that trades down, potentially if the Vikings move up and the next pick, which is the Denver Broncos at 11 and a half, that means he would have to get out of the top 10 and the New York Jets who are sitting at 10. He would have to get by you know, that eight, nine area. This is another one for me, Matt, where I'm looking at what is the earliest he could go. And it's only about a pick and a half earlier than what this over under is. So I kind of lean over that he might go after, but I do have a strong feeling he goes in one of those earliest spots that he could go. I think he's going to be a really, I, I put it this way. Once around the jets or so are on the clock, he's going to be the top player on a lot of teams draft boards from that point on. Exactly. I mean, he's he's probably got a top 10 grade from most teams. And I find it interesting that they picked 11 and a half because I think he won't get past Denver at 12. I mean, unless there's a weird quarterback stuff. But if we're right about Penix and Knicks, I think this is Bowers at 12. Does he last that long? I'm going to say he does not last that long. So you're going to take the under on 11 and a half? Yeah. But I keep on doing before, that. Yeah. On before the Denver pick. This is a really good one. I probably wouldn't touch it, but it's it's a it's a really narrow ceiling and floor for a prospect like Brock Bauer. It is. You know, for a player who might not be drafted in the top nine picks, to know he's not going to be there at 12 either is pretty wild. 
could he do something weird like someone trades up? I mean, you and I have talked about off the air about eight being a spot someone trades up to, or I've, I've brought, no one ever has alt not being a Titan, but why don't they trade down to 20 and take Mims and coach them up? And then, you know, a Dunze and Bowers go seven and eight, you know, could that happen? I mean, something weird could happen at seven and eight. Absolutely. Could. Yeah. Could the, I mean, there's a lot of really good tackles in this class. Could yeah. the, could the Titans themselves be the one that moves out? That's what I mean. Like, yeah, like Alt would be great. But by the way, Joe Alt's not even on here. He's so locked into seven that they won't even put a, an over under number on him. Wow. So another interesting note that now I think about it is you and I have talked a lot about somebody goes to eight because it's a little bit of defense of no man's land for the Falcons, and you could grab a Dunze. Okay, say that happens. Well, then do the Bears try to get out of nine, and somebody moves in for Bowers ahead of the Jets? You know what I mean? Like we could have a domino effect there that helps us with Bowers going early. Mm -hmm. I I really do like someone moving into eight too, which really shakes things mm -hmm. up. So yeah. And the Bears wouldn't like that one bit. No. And they maybe move down and they don't have a second round pick this year either. So right, right. Yeah. And that so could that definitely be a Bowers spot. Yeah, hey, I think I'm going under on Bowers or earlier on Bowers. Uh just, let me know if you have one of these that you feel pretty strong about. Brian Thomas Jr. is 19 and a half over under. Uh I Gosh, these wide receivers, it's so tough. I, I think he's probably wide receiver four. Where does wide receiver yeah. four go? Well, uh, they're telling me that they think the Steelers would not pass on him at 20. Would which, not. And I agree? tend to, I 75% agree. Okay. If there's if there's a top tackle. Is he too similar they, to George Pickens? I don't know if the new offensive coordinator cares. Okay. Guess, you know what I mean? I mean, they, <laughs> I know they were highly interested in Mike Williams and they had a plane ticket for him. I mean, I think they want yeah. big downfield, big people. Yeah. Uh, just run the heck out of the ball, play action and, and throw some lollipops down the field. They have two quarterbacks that have good deep ball accuracy. Right. I think that's what they like. I think he could go 15 to the Colts. I think I mocked him there at one point. I think he could go 17 to the Jags. And the Bengals at 18 would make a lot of sense if they're planning on moving on from Higgins. Byron Murphy, the number is 14 and a half over under. Uh, there's been a lot of heat with him recently, not mm -hmm. only being the first defensive tackle, maybe even being the first defensive player off the board in this draft. I was hoping to see a little higher number, and then I would say, oh, yeah, smash that under. He's going to go earlier than yeah. that. Um, but 14 and a half is a really good line. So I don't I don't think I'd end up touching that one. For no, I wouldn't either. And I think a lot of people might go over because he's not – gotten a lot of hype i think he's well well liked in those draft rooms i do too i think he'll go pretty early i don't think he'll be there 20 you know i think he goes in the top 20 here's one and i know you've done a lot of work on cooper DeGene. we talked about him late last week in a podcast 22 and a half is the over under for cooper DeGene in this draft i don't know that he can get past the eagles you know we we, we did go into him heavy but if you're gonna play a fangio cover four and you have secondary needs basically across the board center and corner I think DeGene would be the corner that they covet more than Wiggins. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I could see that for sure. And a lot of people actually mock Wiggins to, uh, to um, Philadelphia Philly, yeah. at pick. I don't see it anymore. Yeah. Which is why he's the why 22 and a half is the number. Nate Wiggins, coincidentally, 26 and a half. So they've got Cooper going you know, four spots higher as far as over-unders compared to Cooper DeGene. What a perfect line for Wiggins, though, because Tampa 26 and the Cardinals at 27, I think, would be very interested. I don't think he could get past 29 with the Lions, so I wouldn't touch that at all. I think that's like the perfect line on Wiggins. I'm going to say over on Cooper, though, 22 and a half. I think there's, there's a chance... And again, I, I get it. How, yeah. I don't know how high he can go. Does he is 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 our team's going to have him as really the true corner and a, like a number one, yeah. number two corner in this class? So if he's at best, best corner three, and some teams don't even have him at corner, um, I think he could slide a little bit. So I like the over, but uh, it's not as strong. So so far, Bonex is that one bet that that will be made in in all of these. And by the way, I think they've done a really good job, maybe better than in some other years for uh for how they're putting the over under here uh we gotta hit jj mccarthy five and a half is the number here this one fascinates me oh i think he goes in the top five yeah i think even if he goes to the giants at six 
they go up to get him at least one spot to for any other attempts of a team mm-hmm. going up ahead of him to get him. So yeah, I like the under on this one. Going JJ McCarthy going sooner than pick five and a half. I mean, assuming those top three are off the board and you're the Cardinals and the Giants are calling, why not go from four to six and still get a receiver? Maybe it's not the receiver, but it's a receiver that's really, really good. I think McCarthy goes. And I, I don't think that the Chargers will stay at five. I think he goes in the top five. Where are you at on Lad McConkey? 34 and a half is the over. Huh. I think that's really good, but these numbers are strong. Yeah. But man, that means he has to be. That up. means he has to get past the Panthers and Patriots. Patriots are 34, correct? Yeah. Uh, okay. Panthers are 33, P- Patriots are 34. I got to go under, and he might go. I got to go under. under. He might Chiefs. Be, I, I don't think we should be shocked if he's wide receiver four in this draft. Like some people just loves him, right? I, I, I think it could go. A, we have some real group think going on with with how these wide receivers are are ranked. I just think there's so many different flavors, so many different players that every team is going to have just a wild board and a chaotic board compared to what we see with these prospects after those top three wide receivers. I mean, 28 to the Bills, I think, could be his earliest. I Maybe the Ravens love him, you know. Well, here's a Maybe good one. There. Cardinal second pick, you know. So I'm going to go under a McConkey. This one shocks me. This is one where I thought I was going to smash the under. Xavier Worthy's 31 and a half. So he doesn't even get to the Chiefs at 32 here. And mm-hmm. he's in the second round of almost every mock, Matt. I think I picked the under for every one of these, but I'm going to do it again. You know, you and I keep saying somebody's going to love Worthy, whether they I should take him or not. Be, I wanted to, I wanted it to be, you know, 39, and I would say yeah, yeah. under all day. But they put it at 31 and a half. Those sneaky sons of guns at, yeah. uh, at FanDuel. So that's a, that's a really good line there. See, I think Dallas could be a spot for him at 24. I mean, Godwin's a free agent after this year, and they just invested in Evans. Could the the Bucks grab him at 26? Absolutely. What if they're not happy with Jamison Williams in Detroit? So yeah. one of these guys has to slide, though. And I know. Where are we missing out here? If it's not McConkey, Xavier Leggett, 33 and a half. It's too high for me, man. Yeah, I think I'm going over on that one. Like, later. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. some will like him. Some will think he's stiff. You know, the analytics folks will say he's a late breakout guy. You know, yeah, yeah. you don't break out until you're a senior with mm-hmm. six one four three speed. Uh, there, That's there a red flag. Yeah. I know there's a lot that went on with him as a prospect. Um, Someone might like Keon Coleman better. You know, I mean, there's just a lot of competition in that neighborhood. Yes, yes. So basically he has to know. get past the Panthers first pick in round two. And, and, and I, I think he I, does. I, I think he would. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, that one and Knicks, I think, are my favorites. Yep, I'm right there with you. Anybody else? I think we're kind of looking for sliders. I think it's a lot harder to pick the under because we kind of like the unders, but I want I want a slider. Uh, Olu Fashanu, uh, Talise Fuaga, I think could be a good one. He's at 13 and a half. I think he goes later than that because he's just I he's not going to be for everyone. I think every offensive line coach is going to watch Fuaga tape and be like, he's fun, but are you going to draft him t- the top 13? I think he falls. The earliest he could possibly go is probably pick 10. 13. Right? Yeah, maybe 10. Yeah. Maybe. I and mean, 13 is a magic number with the, the awful right side of the Raiders offensive line. Little but shorter arms. You know, some might look at him as a guard, center. right? A lot of teams might like him at guard. Maybe they he's right tackle only. The team needs a left tackle. We've talked about that with uh um okay. and then you have the next pick is a, is a likely offensive tackle pick at 14, too. Right. So I like the over on Talise Fuaga with 13 and a half. Yeah, I do too. I mean, there's you get to 13 really quick in this draft. Oh, yes. 14 and a half for Troy Faltano. So you get you get one more, but then there's that sneaky Saints pick at 14. Hmm. I wouldn't touch it. That's a good spot. Yeah, I like the Fuaga one better. I do too. I mean Fatanu's not gonna get past. Seattle, the Steelers, those types, but those are all later than our number we're shooting for here. So that one's frightening. I would stay away. That's a good number. Uh, here's another one I like a lot. I think we're going to end here on that. Quinion Mitchell, 15 Ooh. and a half. No, I, I, I would, I, th- I like this one probably almost as much, maybe even more than Bo Nix. No way Quinion Mitchell gets past the Colts. Colts. Agreed. I think he's their top target. Yeah. 
Denver could do it. Could the Bears do it in a trade down? Could the Atlanta do it in a trade down? Yes, yes. Mm. I, I like that one too. Now I think he goes in the top 15. And Terry on honor has got the same number, 15 and a half over under. Um, and I'd I think be more interested first. I think Mitchell goes ahead of Arnold. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There we go. So maybe All I would right. take the over on Arnold. Maybe. Wow, those numbers are good. That's a yep. that's a tough exercise. Kool Aid McKinstry, 29 and a half. I have a feeling, gosh, obviously it's a, it's a great spot to put him because the, the Lions mm-hmm. at 29, and that's the most common place he gets mocked. I have a really tough time figuring out if teams are going to love Kool Aid or not. Is he going to be the guy who slides into the second round? We're like, what Kool Aid? Uh, or you know, is he? Does he end up going, you know, seventeen or something? It's interesting where they put the number too, because obviously the Lions, boom, you win if you mm-hmm. go under, and the Ravens have such Alabama ties, you know, at thirty. You can see can him go, going 30, 31, 32. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't like that one either. I guess I would go over, but just because I've gone under so many and eventually you get to 29, but I, I think he's going to be a lion a really good here's chance. Another, a here's another good one that I love the under 31 and a half for Johnny Newton. I think teams love him. I think he's defensive tackle two all day, maybe even defensive tackle one on some boards. I don't think he gets past the Niners at 31, for example, now, from what I understand, he did enough at his workout to alleviate the injury concerns and all that. And there's no concern. Like, he buzzed. played a ton of games. He wasn't hurt in college. He just had to uh, having to have that Liz Frank so he couldn't work out like he wants yeah. right during the draft process. So it's his tape is great. Oh, he's, like, he's the best. He's the best pass rushing tackle for sure. Day one yeah. in the NFL in this class, and might be the best pass rusher. Period. I think him and Latu are the best pass rushers, period. But yep. they're probably not going to be the first one selected at the position. Yeah, Latu's 16 and a half. Uh, I looked at that and kind of didn't like it. Just too too difficult. To, Someone's going to gonna be rough on his injury history. You know? Yeah. That, I mean, it's a neck. I know he played a lot after, but some doctor's going to be like, you can't use the top 20 pick on him. Yeah, or, you know, short career. And teams going to be like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, tiebreaker, we're going to go elsewhere. I mean, obviously the Rams are a possible landing spot, though, too. All right, there we go. Those are the draft cool. props. Draft is coming quick. We are on to draft week. I love it. We need your questions for the final pre-draft mailbag episode Wednesday at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL or drop a question in the YouTube comments. And Matt and I back tomorrow right here. Peacock and Williamson.